Hello and welcome. I thought uh, today I would give in to an urge just to sit and relax and visit with you. So, as you can see, I'm surrounded by quite a few things and I thought we would just uh, talk about this and that. Sometimes I miss the ability to get feedback from you, so I am going to sit here and visit with you as though you were sitting across from me. I have quite a list of things that I want to share. As you can see, my cheat sheet is quite expensive, uh, extensive. So, I have been, um, I love my junk journaling beyond the beyond. However, I've been finding myself taken with a little bit of an urge to um, add um, some art to it in some way. Uh, some way that makes me happy. I tried that on the uh, this that I just finished, and it was fun to do a little bit of painting. So I got out these two uh, books from uh, last year and the year before, and this was my uh, cherry blossom journal, and it is a uh, a book a Japanese book that I uh, worked on through uh, uh, 2018. And it is just, it's a combination of art and uh, collaging. And I truly, truly loved doing this. And then the learning that was required to, um, to make myself happy with junk journaling kind of uh, became all consuming. But I have to be honest, I think I'm going to periodically I'm going to periodically get back to, uh, to doing this uh, because, as you can see, this is a combination of um, collage and some painting and some uh, doodling and some stenciling, etc. So, that was one that I worked on last year. And before that, and I consider this, truly, I consider this a, an altered book. So... Before that, this was my very first example of uh, altering a book. This Mona Vanna uh, was found and it was on the top of a pile of books and it was just looking at me and it was in just lovely condition and I decided that this would be my first experience. So, uh, off I went in uh, 11, 5, 16. So, three years ago. Three years ago, I uh, plunged. I glued some pages together, uh, my Christmas celebration, and I worked away at uh, art journaling. Here is some of uh, some stitchery and some collaging and so forth and so forth. And I just I just loved, loved, loved this. This is, um, uh, these are napkins, and I have, uh, I think I remember I used um, uh, washable oil uh, crayons, and so forth. And I just, well, I miss it, to be honest. I miss doing the occasional little girl. I miss uh, the fun involved in uh, picking a piece of collage and telling a story around it. So here are the two pieces of collage for this one. And there's some collage up here. That was one of my very first uh, gel prints. And on and on. Another example of uh, a piece of uh, practice uh, needlepoint. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of uh, uh, collage to tell a story and so on and so on. And here was the, uh, the Christmas uh, 2017. I'm thinking of uh, taking some time aside and sharing and sharing some more collage stories with you. Then my next thought was this uh, this book that I purchased. Oh goodness it was uh, it was kind of in the vein of this one but this one is not in as good a condition. But I loved the Art Deco design on that cover. 
and I love the fact that it says basket of flowers. Oh my, and that beautiful gilding uh, in that embossed cover. And I opened it up and mm, this was not, needless to say, this is not what I paid for it. Um, the block was hanging out and I thought, well, wouldn't this possibly be great fun to, uh, to turn into a, um, uh, a journal for uh, 2020, uh, or an altered book, excuse me, for uh, 2020, working the same way that I worked in these two. So that is a, um, is a plan for, uh, for next year. These pages are nicely mellowed. Um, and I will use many of them if I can. Look at that beautiful, beautiful engraving of a uh, of an old of an old castle home. Isn't it lovely? Mary, oh, it's a castle. Excuse me. Mary had scarcely left the castle when the countess missed her elegant diamond ring. Well, there you have it. So planning for next year. And maybe having another little visit or two in Monavanna and Cherry Blossom. So let me carefully add to the pile. The next thing that I wanted to uh, remind myself about, I, I kept these uh, on the uh, table uh, by the sewing machine and uh, I had made these and used one of them to make this and here I have them just waiting for me and these are some papers that I pulled uh, that I thought might work uh, to embellish these and I'm going to uh, I'm going to get to those because uh, if these turn out to be as much fun as that was well so this is on my uh, to-dos. This is finally dry. It's uh, a couple of days now, and I thought I would show you, as close as I could get, I wanted to share again this uh, Perlin pen. These, uh, these dots in the middle of the flowers on the cover I've, they've had about 48 hours to dry. As you can see, they have maintained, they have maintained their shape beautifully. And I hope you can hear that. I don't know, but very nice and hard. And uh, this afternoon, when I finish, uh, when I finish visiting with you, uh, my next chore is to use some of my uh, pearl, my DMC pearl cotton, to uh, to sew this together. But uh, if you uh, want to have it, give yourself a treat. I have um, black, I have gold, and silver, and they uh, and I have the uh, a white. Well, it's not quite white; it's pearl, and it does when it looks like this. It does look like little pearls. So, report on pearl and pen, and how happy every time I use them and really let them dry. They're absolutely delish. Yesterday, I got to uh, thinking that uh, Rachel on uh, Roxy Creations, and I do enjoy her videos beyond the beyond. If you haven't, um, if you haven't found her on YouTube, uh, she's Roxy R O X Y Creations, all one word. And uh, I don't think I've missed one of her videos um, for. It seems like forever, and it's never enough. She had been um, using her uh, printer to uh, copy some, and this is um, uh, Medieval Mirage, and this is the Illuminated Flora uh, Digi kit. And I went and I got out my, uh, uh, my vellum. Now let me share which vellum this is because it's nice and heavy. 
there's vellum and vellum. And this is the one I had picked and had and didn't know too much about, uh, about but this uh, is just heavy enough to, uh, to do this job and it worked a treat in my, uh, in my printer. Sometimes my printer grumps and groans and moans at me, but uh, it usually ends up uh, working for me. And so I just kind of close my ears. My husband would uh, would fall to his face and, and he would swoon if um, his printer made sounds like I let mine make, but we have an understanding. Uh, so this is uh, a double size sheet of uh, Medieval Mirage and then I had to find out how to uh, transfer this uh, to work full page for me. And uh, I did, I learned, uh, my husband taught me how, I have to use my uh, Photoshop, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was just the, uh, I had to make a change in the size. So these are two sheets that I thought I would share for you, but on the same tack, um, I thought, you know, Carol, you had, um, on your black and white, you had a limit, such a limited number of uh, white pieces, uh, indeed black pieces, so uh, I thought, oh goodness, I had uh, gotten um, uh, Roxy Creations um, uh, lace kit and these came out to be this size instead of filling up the page. But there again, uh, after doing these, I learned about the, uh, the trick with the Photoshop and uh, this is just paper. This is uh, heavyish uh, cardstock, nice quality cardstock. And this is the one that makes my printer sound like it's, uh, it's dying, but it always just comes through. This is just my uh, heavyweight uh, photo paper and uh, all open. These are all fodder for uh, tearing up, but I cannot complain about the, uh, uh, the quality of the, uh, of the photo there because you can really, really see the grain in this, uh, in this lace that, uh, uh, is in uh, Rachel's uh, kit. So that's going to get put in a different place because that's in my tear-up section. But I have loved, beyond, the, beyond belief, working on white. Now white, black, white, gray, white, uh, sepia, white colors, whatever. And wouldn't have been nice if I'd had that for that, but that's okay. I've decided to use these, uh, which I ran off from her, from her DigiKit. Uh, I'm going to use these to do some more, uh, making some more ephemera. And uh, since this is a little bit heavy, this paper is a little bit heavy, I won't have any difficulty just um, adding uh, uh, to the back if I wish to, uh, because it really doesn't need to be strengthened. Uh, but. I, uh, I like to add a bit of paper to the back, and wouldn't this be a lovely, lovely, lovely journaling card? Yes, it would. And so, these are going to be on my list of things to do also. Now, I'm thinking maybe this one, will, this group of things will have to be done between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. I can't find a time for any other time for it, but then. So, this joy led to, to deciding that I might definitely have to um, work with these to make the cards for a future white project. I'm going to put these together and I think I'm going to put them together with these uh, with these digis because wouldn't they uh, wouldn't they work lovely with a white because of that white background? That goes over there. And then I'm going to take get this out and uh, talk about this again. This has really, really taken root in my, uh, in my imagination. This was the uh, piece of packaging that I got and I thought to myself, wow, wouldn't this wouldn't this puppy be fun to make as a, uh, a 2020 
may be a, uh, a year-long project. This is um, four and three-quarter inches worth of binding. And wouldn't that just be fun filling it up with maybe one, two, three, four, five, maybe six signatures and just play all year doing, doing what? Well, doing whatever uh, I feel like doing at the time. Not looking for a particular rhyme or reason, but just uh, as a total uh, fun junk journal. And also, I think I have decided that I'm going to trim this down just a smidge top and side. I don't think, I don't think that there's any reason for this to stay nine inches wide. Maybe eight inches would do it. And this is 11. Now, mm -mm, that's just a little too much, I think. So I'm thinking maybe nine, but I'll have a good think on that. It'll still be a nice sized journal with this delicious place for play signatures. So that's down there. And then it dawned on me that uh, we're, I'm, we're going to be roll. I'm going to be rolling in, and so are you, into uh, October, which is um, two things. Uh, of course, it's Halloween at the end of the month, and then uh, Thanksgiving at the end of November. And in my mind, I don't know how yours works along those lines, but in my mind, that's um, uh, Halloween, and then from Halloween until. Um, the end of November is fall, uh, fall. So this must be done before I uh, going on uh, Halloween. This I have for three years, three signatures for th from three years worth of uh, journaling, and there are four. There are four places in here, so I'm going to work on another signature to finish this up, but of course, I uh, I just spent time uh, collaging, as you can see, and pushing this back with, um, with uh, gesso, and I'm going to have to put something in here, but that's going to be my, uh, my Halloween project, is to make, do this cover, and make one signature to add to, to the three that I already have, and that's going to be starting October 1st is coming sooner than soon. If you feel an urge to uh, uh, go and get yourself uh, something to drink because I know I'm on a roll. Next thing, of course, more to think about. Oh, I love this junk journal making. I went and got this out. Uh, this was my first ever try at uh, Christmas junk journaling. My, f I was only junk journaling, I would say, for two or three months before this one. So what I did was I purchased a, uh, it's a children's book, and it was what I would call a naked journal inside. So I thought, let me learn process for embellishing and so forth before I start to try to uh, make the journal. So that is what I did last year. And this is from the, uh, from the Dollar Tree. And this I keep on my uh, coffee table in the family room at the holidays. And here we are. These are the uh, bits I added to the, uh, to the spine last year. And I covered up the, uh, the children's book back with a piece of uh, Christmas paper and the same Christmas paper on the front, and then I collaged and had great fun uh, collaging uh, the front cover. Something, really, it was so new to me. All of the things that I did here were such a, a, uh, a jumping off the cliff into uh, a different world, including uh, gluing down uh, Santa's glasses. And I particularly enjoyed having this cover because uh, um, my husband, uh, makes model airplanes, not the size Santa has. His are five feet wide. But uh, 
So this was really very meaningful and great fun. And uh, here we have uh, a quick look at uh, some of the things that I did last year. And uh, this was the uh, 12 Days of Christmas, A Christmas Carol. And I thought that fit because uh, that's how I got my name. Um, and so I just played and played my heart out and enjoyed it all tremendously. And then uh, I realized that, wow, uh, I think I had painted myself into a corner with this. That was my first belly band. Um, I particularly, I particularly pushed myself uh, into a corner. Now these are uh, Christmas cards from years past. Uh, when I, come on, come on, no, 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 let's have a little trim here. Let's have a little trim here. That doesn't belong there. There we go. When I uh, got to the back, first of all, I put this piece of heaviness in here, and you can see how thick that is. I didn't know any better. I didn't realize I was making uh, an alligator here. But I love every little bit of it. I remember doing it. And this was the part that I loved, loved the most. It's coming, it's coming, I promise is my first snippet. This is on, uh, I believe this is on a piece, yes, this is on a piece of red felt. And, oh, I just loved every second of that, and I have to admit, I kind of thought I was the cat's whiskers when I had produced that for the first time after watching just a few videos uh, on how to do it. I just uh, plunged. But I thought, well, next year, ah, uh, I can use this, which was uh, what this looked like before I got to got to it. But then, whoops, unless I want it to be like that. Hmm. Unless I want it to be like that and won't be able to lie down, but then it did lie down last year with this. Hmm. What? How about I just to Christmas play in this section, and if it has to stand open like this, I can put it up in a higher place and not tie it up. I would be able to use all of these pages to uh, play Christmas 2019. Hmm. Oh, I'll have to give that a think. Goodness, I wish I could hear what you think, but I'm wondering if I'm willing to have it like that, because if that's that much, then that would be that much. Hmm. I'm glad I had this chat with you, because I think I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to do it. Is it cheating to use this nakedy part? It wasn't over here, and it was so much fun. I think I will. So, that's another thing that was on my mind, and uh, I think I've made an executive decision about the rest of this journal. And today, today I had a little, uh, a little visit with uh, Hobby Lobby, because, let me wet my whistle, my Friday Starbucks uh, chai. Let me share my Hobby Lobby venture today with you. We're having a lot of sales. When they uh, they have a lot of sales on uh, uh, Paper Studio, fifty percent sales. But now back again to black and white. As I told you, I had almost. Here it comes again. Uh, Yep, here it comes again. I had almost nothing 
in my uh, in my papers, I had this little bit, and that's a piece out of, cut out of a color book. This is this was the basis, and uh, really. And if I hadn't had the uh, dollar store uh, contact paper, well, so today they were having four for a uh, dollar, uh, and I said, let me just find a few papers that I might use. I'm not sure of this one, I'm not sure of that one, but I thought, hmm, these two might do well. And then I saw this one, and I thought, oh, this one put me in mind of um, uh, Andrea, who is Artie Mays. Another video channel, uh, her videos, I wouldn't miss those either. So I purchased these. Four for a dollar. That was good doings. And then I found this, and it was Paper Studio, so it was 50% uh, off. And I've let me see, and I'm thinking these might be a good good papers to have. Not all of them, but uh, many of them. Look at that. Ah, boy, if I had that there. Well, I have it now. Oh, I hadn't seen that one. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. So, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit more ready now when I get back to my white. That's over there. Then, of course, I always scope the. Um, I always scope out the uh, lace section, uh, and it's usually, and it's usually. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm. Well, yeah. I didn't realize. I guess I didn't realize. Read carefully. What this cost? It's um, one was fifteen dollars a yard and one was eight. Thank heavens for the sale, or not? Because I just always, not always, but often find such pretty lace at Hobby Lobby. Got this piece, and uh, after my experience with dyeing using the uh, distress colors, uh, this is the type of lace that just soaks up that light, that dye beautifully. So I got half a yard of that. Yes, I did. And this one, only because it won't last long, and I just couldn't walk away from this puppy. Let's put that over here so that you can see it here, and then up close. Isn't this just lovely. So, half a yard of that. That should last quite a while. I don't know how often I'm going to use it, but I love lace. Even nice quality new lace is, is lovely. The a little bit of fringe on the end of this lace, the um, netting on which the lace was applied extends past the edge. Let me get close, close, close. Let's see if you can see it. Here you go. Uh, this netting goes past the edge and actually encases the little bit of fringe around the end. Pretty, pretty quality. So, that was my uh, absolute for today. And doesn't that work there? Well, it would if you were uh, in frame, Carol. Then, uh, a few weeks ago, I showed you these that I uh, got at uh, AC Moore for 55% off, and I really did fall in love with them. They work so well. They cut so beautifully that uh, I've been doing some uh, fuzzy cutting lately in the evening, and I purchased this one today. Um, because I'm hoping that uh, it, they work uh, as well as the uh, as the large ones. So that was a uh, a treat to myself. But look what I found: a Finnebear stencil. Oh my! That almost reminds you of plastic lace. 
let's go in here and see what we have. Her products are absolutely wonderful. And for those of you who might want to use um, clear gesso, Finnebear's clear gesso is not gritty. I wouldn't use any other kind, even the golden, none of it now. Oh my, isn't that a nice heavy, that's a nice heavy stencil by Prima. Isn't that a lovely lace pattern? Hmm. I could needless to say, I could not, not even begin to resist. Packaging, packaging. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now I'm going to put this here, but uh, this is uh, not my favorite thing in the world, so it's uh, in the circular file. But there's a piece of lace. Uh, I got some more of these envelopes. Uh, Paper Studio also, so 50% off, marble vellum. Just love them. Just love them. I shared those with you before, and now I have another package. And then I went around because I've been hearing, uh, been hearing folks talk on um, uh, YouTube about uh, the various and sundry sacks and things they've been finding in the uh, craft large glassine bag. Okay. Large glassine bag it is. And paper studio. Dollar and fifty cents. Cannot complain about that. Let's see what the glassine is like. Well, it's not too transparent, but it is um, it is oily feeling enough that uh, I can see where they're using the word glassine. However, it's still lovely. I love the size and the shape. It is um, five by se five and a half by seven and a half. And these uh, sacks and things, flat sacks, and I realize there is a difference, yes, between this one and the ones that really do have a um, uh, a floor on the uh, on the sack. So I uh, made sure that I picked this one. Over the other. I am, uh, I think I'm, e I'm harkening back right now to uh, Gail Agostinelli and uh, dealing with packaging. I don't know what it is about packaging that throws me off. It is unbelievable how packaging. And I, it's ugly sometimes. Oh, isn't this one nice? Isn't that one nice? Yes, it is. Now, I might not have been so uh, grabby if these had been full price, but they weren't. Now, this one is here. And then I saw this one. And I thought, oh my, 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 my. Uh, six by nine. Six by nine it is. This is the treasure that I think it is. Oh yes. Oh yes. Definitely. Well, that was just great fun. And I really went to Hobby Lobby to uh, see if they had a uh, see if they had those scissors. But then these other things just kind of happened. But such a good happening. Such a good happening. Love it, love it. And that's today's little trove. And it's the uh, end of my list. I do hope that you have enjoyed uh, this visit today. I have certainly enjoyed it. And now I'm going to uh, put these things away and uh, 
get out my equipment and uh, do the pamphlet stitch in that little white journal. If you have enjoyed all of the uh, meanderings and uh, rabbit holes that we went down today, please consider giving me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would appreciate your subscribing to my channel. Bye now.